point you, the ones that don't speak Portuguese, but this is going to be all in Portuguese, this uh, press conference. No, I'm joking. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Uh, Laura de Carvalho Risotto. Yeah, hello. <laughs> it's been a while since someone said my full yeah, name. Wow. But it, it, because it's so Portuguese, well, not the risotto part, but the de Carvalho. So do, do you have relatives in, in, in Portugal? Yeah, on my mother's side, actually, I believe her grandparents were from Portugal as well. So I am Latvian and Brazilian, representing Latvia and Portugal. It's quite the ride. <laughs> but welcome to Lisbon. Uh, it's a great pleasure to, to have you here. Um, you, you were born, of course, in one of the most beautiful cities in, in, the, in the world, in Rio. Um, how's Rio, by the way? Continua in. Sempre lindo. No, Rio is, is definitely one of the most wonderful places I've been to. It's sunshine, beach, and it, actually Lisbon reminds me a lot of Rio. Yeah. So it's nice. And, yeah. And what, very, in what way? Just the people here. Everyone's so nice and chill. And also, I can feel. I mean, Portugal colonized Brazil, so they, they have a lot of connections. Sorry right? for that. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> But it's nice, and you see the connection, the cultural connection, yeah. and the how the people behave as well. It's very similar. It's nice. I feel very cozy, very at home. Good, good to know. But of course, you've been spending a lot of time in Latvia, and you're also learning the language. How yes. how different is your routines in Brazil and then in the U.S. because you also lived there for quite a, a long time, and now in Riga, I imagine that you spend most of the time there. I mean, it's been crazy because I live in New York. I still okay. live there, but I've been, you know, spending a lot of time in Latvia and just traveling back and forth for the past few months because of the whole Eurovision preparation. You know, there are the pre-party that I attended to. I went to Madrid and Amsterdam and then Tel Aviv, and then I shot a music video in Paris recently that I'm wow. super excited about. Yeah. It's like a global operation. Oh my God! Yeah, Eurovision has really turned my life upside down in the best way possible. Good, so, good to know. Yeah, but it, every place offers something different, and I think right now is a crazy time because I. I feel like I spend, I'm spending time in many different places, not just one. So. And do you already have like uh, special places in Riga that you did that you like to go? Yeah, right now we, my grandma actually just moved back to Latvia, my Latvian grandma, and I actually really like just being at her apartment because it's so cozy and it's it's it feels like home as well. Um, just anywhere that I can go with my family, really, to grab a bite. It's, it's a good time. And you decided to learn Latvian also to be more in touch with, with uh, yes, of course. heritage. How difficult is it for you? For you? Very, very hard. <laughs> but I like but it But you're a lot. managing, because I saw an interview on TV that you're actually, you know, kind of... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying my best. The more I can speak Latvian, I, I always try. Of course, with the Eurovision time now, it's been harder to find time to study, but I definitely, I want to become fluent. I will get back to it for sure. Um, but in Latvia, like the, the Latvian language is our religion, right? So it's really important that we learn the language. And I love it actually. It's so it's a beautiful language, and it's so interesting too. The grammar behind it is so logical. So I'm yeah, excited about it. Yeah, it is a beautiful language. Did, did you think about making a Latvian version of Funny Girl, and also a Portuguese version of, of Funny Girl? Oh my God! Okay. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, Latvian version. Wait, <laughs> give me a second. We were joking about it backstage too, because the Funny Girl, like, it would really. I've written versions for songs before in different languages because I my first language is Portuguese but I write in English sometimes I write Portuguese versions for my songs that are in English um, but for funny girl I really have to think about it because it, yeah. it just it wouldn't fit you know what would it be in Latvian funny girl yeah funny Could girl it work? no you look at that you look at that it would be yeah but like it, it, it's for songwriting you have to basically when you're writing versions you have to take the original message of the song yes. and rewrite the lyric yeah. to fit in that language so it would take a little bit more than what I have now. So what can you tell us about Funny Girl? What were the ideas behind it? And uh, mm. is, it, is it a true story? Were you ever the funny girl in, in, in a relationship? Or? Well, who has it been? The Funny Girl is a, is a song that talks about, basically, that's to, to speak as a millennial, to being friend-zoned, right? Mm -hmm. It's a girl that falls in love with her best friend and she doesn't want to tell them about it. She feels insecure because she's afraid of being rejected, right? It's very normal and doesn't want to make the first move, but she always makes him laugh. They're just the best friends. But then one day, she can't take it anymore, she decides to finally tell him, this is how I feel, but she waited too long. And then he fell in love with someone else, and she witnessed, witnesses that happening, and she became just the friend, just the funny girl. And my message with the song is for people, and what I learned from writing the song was yeah. just, 
embrace vulnerability. Don't be afraid of hearing no or rejection. Just it's it's such a beautiful thing when you feel that way about someone, and you should let them know. You know, whether you're a boy or a girl, don't be just Definitely. fun. Definitely. Yeah, so you even make if it you're right. making a fool of yourself, it's just yeah. better to just put it all out. Exactly. You should, of course. How did you get in touch with Supernova? And did you have the song before, or did you have the song before, or then you decided to 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 send it to Supernova? Yeah, I had written the song uh, just for myself before, and then I was planning to travel to Latvia for um, the Song and Dance Festival that happens there this summer, and then I saw a story about Supernova, and of course I knew about Eurovision, but I hadn't really thought to apply. I was like, well, you know, what, what song would I do? Yeah, and it's like, well, it's in Portugal this year would be kind of amazing. Like stars like, align. Exactly. Yeah, I was yeah. like, well, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> and then it happened, so I, I, I feel so lucky, really. Ah. This is such a great moment. Okay, uh, questions from uh, the audience. I would like to stress that the organization would not allow in any way any question that would put the artist in distress. So I beg you and order you to keep uh, in the musical terms, please. Yes, here on the third row. Hello. Hi, Michael from Eurovisionary.com. This is a Dor Lauren um, from America, like yourself. Um, what brought you to America from Brazil, and why do you know, live in New York rather than your home country? Would you love about it? Well, I think I lived in the US actually when I was younger already for a year. When I was 11 years old to 12, so 2005, 2006, I lived there for a year because my family moved. And then I started learning English. I did my sixth grade in the US, Minnesota, back in the day. And I, I think that's when I started writing my songs. And so I learned how to write songs in English already. That's how I learned how to express myself musically. And it felt very natural, that's what I liked, and I think a lot of my musical influences also came from the US. And I think when I was there in school, I got to see a little bit of a glimpse of what the inter entertainment industry was there. And there's so much power, so much investment, and just so much inspiration, and it felt like that's what, where I wanted to be to pursue that dream. And also I write my songs in English, so it, it really felt like it makes sense. Um, and as an artist, I think the idea, our purpose is to really share our stories and share our message and what I, I, I want my message to achieve and to reach the biggest number of people possible and English is a really great way to do that as well. And um, when I was 17, I was already working in Brazil, I had my first album out there with Universal Music Brazil at the time. Um, I got a scholarship to go to Berkeley College of Music in Boston and I've always, I already had studied music for many years, classical piano and voice and guitar, but I really wanted to go to college to study music and, and just perfect myself as a musician. And when I got the scholarship, I was like, well, <laughs> I can't say no. And that's kind of how it all began, and I've been there ever since. But you go back to Brazil quite often. Yeah, yeah, of course. I was there last year, and I'm coming back this year as well, so I'm excited. Yeah. There in the back. Thank you. Hi, Alistair Birch from Europhile. Can you please tell us about the names of your musical instruments? And when you get a new instrument, when does it get a name and how do you choose it? Interesting. You did your research, man. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, well, okay, so for those of you who don't know, I tend to name my instruments, um, especially my guitars, because at the end of the day, I feel like they're my best friends. They're the ones that I tell my secrets to and then create. They're like my co-writers, I guess. Um, my first guitar ever is a blue Yamaha, and it's called Shelby. And uh, I think it, the names, all of them came up in a different way. This Shelby, I think I was maybe 15, and I was like in a in a like Omegle or chat room with my friend. I didn't know what it was, but then we created a username called Shelby. I was like, that's a cool name. And I remember writing with my guitar and looking at it, being just like, Shelby, yeah. <laughs> And I have another one that I called Haley, and I wrote it when I was, um, I decided the name when I was playing and I was writing a song, and I was really inspired by a song by Paramore at the time as well, and I looked at the guitar and it just made sense. Um, so I think that the names, um, they're usually something that inspires me. I have another guitar also that's Joss, that's inspired by Joss Stone, one of my biggest references as well as a vocalist. But so, do, you, yeah. do you talk to them like, hey Shelby, how are you? I don't want to sound crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sound crazy. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, it depends. Songwriting process, it's a little bit of you talking to yourself, right? So in that I sense, know, I don't like say, hi, good morning. <laughs> I hug my instruments, but I hope that's normal. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's perfectly normal. Okay, it's okay. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, make me feel better. <laughs> okay, here in the front. 
Hi, my name is Farouk from Poco Revision magazine in France. You, you told that uh, you were writing songs in English, but if I ask you to write a song in Portuguese and a song in Latvian, what style would you choose for the Portuguese song and for the Latvian song? I mean, I don't think I would really choose. Very good question, by the way. Um, I don't think I would choose. I think I would sit down with my guitar on my piano and kind of see what shows up. I think my natural approach to music, it's usually, I like writing, it's like singer-songwriter stuff, uh, pop and some, I say pop with a growl because I like the soulful approach to things. Um, but I think it would depend on what the story is, what it asks for, and then see kind of what flows naturally. But probably within something within the pop genre, I guess. Right. Yeah. Sounds about it. Uh, you're obviously celebrating Latvia with all the redness uh, of your clothes and the stage. How, was that, is that on purpose? Are you trying to be as Latvian as possible on your vision? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I definitely, I'm, I'm proud to be able to represent Latvia and I'm trying to do that to my best capacity for sure. Yeah. The color red is a color that I feel connected to in many ways because it represents passion and drama. I think the Funny Girl song has a lot to do with that as well. Um, and I like how it makes me feel when I'm on stage. So it's a color that brings me comfort but also makes me feel empowered. It makes me stand in a different yeah. way. And you know, you know the colors of the Latin flag too. It's just a very nice coincidence. <laughs> and there's um, all the, the hair flipping too, which is quite Yeah, cool. I mean you have, you have a lot of hair, so you gotta get it out of the way. I'm, I'm so, I think it's so funny it became a thing. I didn't really expect it. You should but, yeah. teach us how to do that because oh I, everybody would love to know how okay. to flip hair like that. If I do that, everyone has to do it with me. I'm not doing yeah, it yeah, just okay. by myself. Okay, we can try. Can yeah, try. just. Whew. <laughs> no, no. Let, right teach now? Us. Yeah. Oh sure. my god. Uh, okay, I feel like I have to stand. <laughs> Things, the things we do. <laughs> I mean, for the funny girl, I think it's just here. Yeah. I, get, I want some, some people, stand up, stand up and do it with okay, you. Let's, let's, let's stand up and do some. Turn out with the camera, stand up, come on, everybody. Come everybody. on, come on. Yes, thank you. Even the guys, I know you don't have that Especially much. Especially the flip, guys. Like, yeah. <laughs> It's all about the, the head. Good, that's good. Okay, so just imagine if you don't have long hair that you have this like beautiful weave. <laughs> You're just here, and then it's just about kind of like the click of the neck, so uh -huh. you're just here. Oh, my mom did it so oh, yes. well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bulgaria knows how to do it. Yeah. Good one. Good one. It's basically, it's basically it. Yeah. I think like I, I've always had like long hair, a lot of hair, so I incorporated it into the performance. But I, the reaction I got to it, so it looks funny. like a signature, which is really cool. I mean, I'll take it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there. Oi, Laura. My name is Antonio. I'm from Russia. Muito obrigado por toda essa paixão. Uh, foi absolutamente ótimo. But the question will be in English. Uh, what a is very good Brazilian accent, by the way. Yeah, that was very good Portuguese. It's not an accent. Uh, what is your favorite uh, Brazilian uh, singers and musicians? And uh, who of them influenced your music? Good question. Mm, uh, so many. I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of the classics, like old school, like Paralama de Sucesso. Love them. I listen to a lot of Kid Abelha. I love Yves Sangalo. Um, I'm actually performing one of the songs that she performs in uh, really? in Iru Village. It's Santa Chamasa Tassin. That's by Javier Chiviana and Paul Max Valle. And let me see. So Jorge, I think So Jorge is fantastic as well. Um, Gilberto Gil, Caetano Veloso. Really the classics. Those are my favorites. Yeah. You're just, it's coming from such a rich country uh, regarding music that well, I mean, all this influence, has, it's almost like it's a natural thing when you're a musician. I'm very lucky in that sense because both Brazil and Latvia are very yeah. musical countries. Latvia is the country that sings the music that comes from there. Choir music is absolutely beautiful. They have choirs of like 20,000 people. It's insane. So I'm very lucky that I was able to be a part of two very musical Musical countries. countries. And you're actually calling your next album Amber. Yeah, Amber is a Baltic stone, it's a stone that represents Latvia as well. And then for my, I have two albums out, and then instead of doing a third full out album, I decided to divide it in chapters, in EPs of four to five songs. And each EP is going to showcase a different side of me as an artist. The first one was Ruby, that was already red, so I've been with this red thing for a little <laughs> while. Um, and it was very pop driven. And then the next one is Amber. Um, different color, and uh, it's going to explore more soulful side. Funny Girl is actually supposed to be a part of Amber. And it's we, gonna be part of that. Yeah, and I, I anticipated the release because of the this whole Eurovision thing. But there's one more song actually from Ruby that's going to come out after Eurovision. That wow. I just shot a music video for. Are you are you singing that in Eurovision? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Mysterious. Okay, here. 
Last question. Hi, Laura. I'm Patrick from EFR 12 uh, Eurovision Radio in France. From the first time when I heard uh, Funny Girl, I thought, oh, this song is so classy and glamorous. It could fit with a uh, commercial for perfumes. <laughs> How would you react if you were proposed to, to, to use this song for this purpose? I mean, thank you. First of all, merci. Uh, I mean, I would be so flattered. That would be amazing. It's uh, I think when you're writing a song, I'm, I'm I'm just thinking about the story of it, really, not where it's gonna go that way. But I mean, yo, any perfume commercials needing music? Hit me up. You know, I'm available. <laughs> yeah, okay, you. she's the funny Brazilian Latvian girl and very talented too. A big, big applause to Laura Risotto of Latvia. Guys.